Hi everybody, I'm Jim Skelly and this is The Global Conversation. Uh, it's the 10th of our mini lectures for the spring semester in 2012. Um, uh, there's a number of things I want to talk to you about, not least of which is the quite extraordinary quality of the Learning Circle presentations. I think you all deserve a great deal of credit, those of you who were actively engaged in um, producing these projects. Um, I recently today uh, made sure that all of those that I've received have been posted. We have 11 of them up on the website now at the top of the home page. So I'd recommend that you go to the home page and take a look in some depth if you're able to, if you have the time, and take a look at the various um, the productions that uh, people engaged in. Some there's a Prezi site, there's uh, websites, there's um, uh, PowerPoint presentations, there's even a newsletter that somebody who that one circle produced. Um, I do think that it's, it, you, you know, those of us who've been managing the course, if you will, are sometimes frustrated, as are many of the students, as I know, uh, with the fact that some people don't seem to be participating, etc., etc. Um, we go through this every semester. It's difficult to get people to work together on a common project across all sorts of time zones and national boundaries, national and international boundaries. One of the things that always happens, however, is that students do produce very, very good work. And I think all of you deserve great credit. And thanks again to the teaching assistants for also doing an absolutely great job again this semester. Um, there's a number of other things that I'd like to talk to you about as well. So if you, if, let me come back to this. Let me finish this up about learning circles. One of the things I'd like to recommend that you do with regard to the Learning Circle presentations is to go to the, um, the pages for the actual forum on a particular Learning Circle uh, and make some comments to those who uh, participated in the project. Um, I think it's a, a very worthwhile idea. Some of them you'll find are very, very compelling and um, we can try to make them available to you as a resource for work that you might want to do in the future as well. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about today, and let me just find this. Um, you know, I know a number of you are very, very concerned about um, uh, food. Uh, some people are quite obsessed with it, actually, but uh, there may be a good reason for this. A um, number of students at the University of Ulster uh, watched, um, and, and many of you elsewhere have undoubtedly done the same, have watched the production of the film um, Food, Inc., which um, is not good to watch just before you go out to eat, actually, because it'll say to yourself, where does my food come from? Um, and today in the newspapers, there is the announcement of a seven KFC. Well, it used to be Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now they just call it KFC, right? Um, in an Australian case, um, uh, a salmonella case, where a young girl and her family uh, became violently ill, and the young girl was so ill that uh, she wound up hospitalized and now severely uh, disabled. Um, and um, uh, KFC was ordered to pay um, over $8 million in settlement, uh, which will go, among other things, to the care of this uh, now young girl. Uh, over the next uh, some years. Now, one of the things that you should look at is the entire issue of salmonella. It's tied to the way we produce foods. In the case of the KFC outbreak, um, it comes uh, along with other outbreaks with, at Taco Bell, for example. Um, Taco Bell and KFC are owned by the same company a Kentucky-based multinational global food producer called Yum. <laughs> Yum Brands. Yum Brands uh, produces, uh, they own KFC, Taco Bell, and um, uh, Pizza Hut. So um, you want to ask yourself, where does this stuff come from and under what conditions was it produced, okay? And if you take a look at um, how many cases do you think there are of salmonella every year? In the United States alone, about a million, about 20,000 people were hospitalized, and um, I think in 2010, a little less than 400 people died. Hmm? 
Uh, and I can send you some information on various websites that are, that are watching this and other um, uh, diseases, uh, including deaths, that are a consequence of food contamination, especially E. coli. I'll send you some uh, information about all that. And let's see. See for yourself what's going on and then ask yourself, what should you be eating? Okay. Now, um, I want to say that we're at the very end of the semester. This is probably going to be my uh, last uh, mini lecture for the semester. We may try to put one more on because next week I'm going to um, uh, the Netherlands to um, meet with uh, many of the students in Aje, but also especially the students in the environmental working group of Aje, which uh, is very, very active, and we're hoping to have more of those students in uh, in the course next uh, next semester in fall. Now let me say one other thing, and that is, I know some of you find this course very compelling. If that's true, and you would like to be a uh, teaching assistant in this course, please don't hesitate to contact me. Okay, you all have my email, I think, from the messages I've sent to you. Don't hesitate to get in touch, all right? It would be really, really good to have really engaged students involved. All the best.